morning, boys and girls. Ms. Cretelli here. I'm going to read another chapter of the BFG. If you remember yesterday when we read, Sophie, the little girl in the story, had just discovered during the middle of the night that there was something creeping about outside of her window. Chapter two is called Who? It wasn't a human. It couldn't be. It was four times as tall as the tallest human. It was so tall, its head was higher than the upstairs window of the houses. Sophie opened her mouth to scream, but no sound came out. Her throat, like her whole body, was frozen with fright. This was the witching hour, all right. The tall black figure was coming her way. It was keeping very close to the houses across the street, hiding in the shadowy places where there was no moonlight. On and on it came, nearer and nearer, but it was moving in spurts. It would stop, then it would move on, then it would stop again. But what on earth was it doing? Aha! Sophie could see now what it was up to. It was stopping in front of each house. It would stop and peer into the upstairs window of each house in the street. It actually had to bend down to peer into the upstairs windows. That's how tall it was. It would stop and peer in. Then it would slide onto the next house and stop again and peer in and so on along the street. It was much closer now and Sophie could see it was more clearly. Looking at it carefully, she decided it had to be some kind of person. Obviously, it was not a human, but it was definitely a person. A giant person, perhaps. Sophie stared hard across the misty, moonlit street. The giant, if that's what he was, was wearing a long black cloak. In one hand, he was holding what looked like a very long, thin trumpet. In the other hand, he held a large suitcase. The giant had stopped now, right in front of Mr. and Mrs. Goucher's house. The Gouchers had a green grocer shop in the middle of High Street, and the family lived above the shop. The two Goucher children slept in the upstairs front room. Sophie knew that. The giant was peering through the window into the room where Michael and Jane Goucher were sleeping. From across the street, Sophie watched and held her breath. She saw the giant step back a pace and put the suitcase down on the pavement. He bent over and opened the suitcase. He took something out of it. It looked like a glass jar, one of those square ones with a screw top. He unscrewed the top of the jar and poured what was into it, into the end of the long trumpet thing. Sophie watched, trembling. She saw the giant straighten up again, and she saw him pull the trumpet in through the open upstairs window of the room where the Goucher children were sleeping. She saw the giant take a deep breath, and whoof, he blew through the trumpet. No noise came out, but it was obvious to Sophie that whatever had been in the jar had now been blown through the trumpet into the Goucher children's bedroom. What could it be? As the giant withdrew the trumpet from the window and bent down to pick up the suitcase, he happened to turn his head and glance across the street. In the moonlight, Sophie caught a glimpse of an enormous, long, pale, wrinkly face with the most enormous ears. The nose was as sharp as a knife, and above the nose there were two bright flashing eyes and the eyes were staring straight at Sophie. There was a fierce and devilish look about them. Sophie gave a yelp and pulled back from the window. She flew across the dormitory and jumped into her bed and hid under the blanket. And there she crouched, still as a mouse and tingling all over. I don't know if you can see it or not, but that is a picture of what appears to be the long, tall, thin giant of a person. That was a short chapter, so I think I'll read one more because this next one is only two pages long. It's called The Snatch. Under the blanket, Sophie waited. After a minute or so, she lifted a corner of the blanket and peeped out. For the second time that night, her blood froze to ice and she wanted to scream, but no sound came out. There at the window, with the curtains pushed aside, was the enormous, long, pale, wrinkly face of the giant person staring in. The flashing black eyes were fixed on Sophie's bed. The next moment, a huge hand with pale fingers came sneaking in through the window. This was followed by an arm, an arm as thick as a tree trunk. In the arm, the hand, the fingers were reaching out across the room towards Sophie. This time, Sophie really did scream, but only for a second because very quickly, the huge hand clamped down over her blanket and the scream was smothered by the bedclothes. Sophie crouched underneath the blanket felt strong fingers grasping hold of her, and then she was lifted up from her bed, blanket and all, and whisked out of the window. If you can think of anything more terrifying than that happening to you in the middle of the night, then let's hear about it. The awful thing was that Sophie knew exactly what was going on, although she couldn't see it happening. 
she knew that a monster or giant with an enormous long pale wrinkly face and dangerous eyes had plucked her from her bed in the middle of the witching hour and was now carrying her out through the window smothered in a blanket. What actually happened next was this. When the giant had got Sophie outside, he arranged the blanket so that he could grasp all the four corners of it at once in one of his huge hands with Sophie imprisoned inside. In the other hand, he seized the suitcase and the long trumpet thing and off he ran. Sophie, by squirming around inside the blanket, managed to push the top of her head out. Little... Hold on. 